Hi, I'm Carolyn Weaver from Body and Soul Companion, and you are in Decision Making and Discernment, according to Ignatius. And this is part of the spiritual exercises in my manual. It's week 19. After week 19, day one, Jesus going to the Jordan and starting his public ministry. So we went all last week through scriptures that um, enunciate the four points of discerning, the first four points of discerning God's will. Love God above all, seek to imitate Jesus, connect to the Spirit's movements, and free yourself of inordinate attachments. So if you haven't done that, I encourage you to go back and also examine prayer that that would be your base for discernment. So now we're going to go into presenting God with a question for discernment. And we will also go through discerning through remembering past decisions that you've made in your life. We're going to go into your life history, your memory, your um, intellect, your heart, all your body. It's, it's a kind of a fun process. And this may take a while. You can skip steps if you'd like. If there's something that doesn't float your boat, then you can skip it. But today is going to be, we're going to be discerning our question um, at, for a decision. Just bringing it before God and just listening to God's voice and how to frame that, that question. So I invite you to close your eyes. And take a deep breath. Getting in touch with your body as you breathe in and out. Relaxing into your chair. Finding that comfortable spot where you're supported and you can just let what you're sitting in hold you up and just relaxing every muscle knowing that you're supported both, both physically and figuratively. One last look at your body. Where is there tension? Relax. Let go. And as we physically settle down, I invite you to settle down your mind as well. There might be distractions, lots of things swirling around. Just invite you to lay them at the feet of God, knowing that he will care for all the things, all your concerns, all your burdens. And then finally, as you gaze at God, know that he's looking upon you. Anthony DeMello said, behold God beholding you and smiling. Receive his loving, smiling gaze on you. Lord, we pray that more of our day would be directed to loving you 
and deepening your presence in our life. That that would overflow into praise and service. Lord, we do have a deep desire to follow your call through the decision that we will be making. We want to do what will bring you ultimate glory. And you can add whatever else you desires you might have. I'll give you a little bit of time. What are you desiring as you present this discernment question to God? What are you desiring? Give you a little bit of time. So in this attitude, being in the presence of God, receiving his loving gaze on you, describe to God the decision that you want to discern. Describe it with as much time as you need. If I don't give you enough time, turn off. Turn off the video. You can even journal this if you really want a record of this. I think I'm going to journal. Take your time and again, describe to God the decision you want to discern. So turn off if you need more time, but I'm going to ask one more question that you might want to journal. And I, I really do call it your discernment journal, but that's what this is going to be, just a um, talking to God. So you'll have a record, and that's the nice thing about it. So I want you to elaborate in your journal um, the important points of the decision. What are the key important points about this decision?
So again, if that's not enough time for you, I encourage you to turn off the video and journal away. So now, before God, state concisely, just maybe in one sentence, and even state it as a question to God, just in one sentence, what concisely, the, what the decision is before you. And you can write that down so you have it in your mind. So I put it as a question. What's your question for discernment? Turn off the video if that's not enough time. So now I invite you to bring that statement before God and pay attention as you ask that question. What thoughts arise as you ask the question? What feelings arise? And thoughts might be, oh, well, that's, this is a dumb question. That could be the thought that arises. It could be, I'm crazy for think, asking this question. I don't have enough time. You know, whatever comes to mind, your thoughts that are running through your head when you present that concise question to God. What are your thoughts, feelings, even what's happening in your body? Um, Note that, and then note that in your journal. What Liebert calls stirrings. What are the stirrings when you present that question? And a deeper question might be in emotions, what anxiety rises or what fear arises when I think about that decision? Or what joy, what happiness, whatever, what are those emotions that you're experiencing? Write down those.
turn off the video if you need to. But I'm going to, yesterday I read Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. I'm going to read it in the Passion. Also, I should emphasize that if you don't feel from doing this stirrings, you don't feel like your question for discernment is a good one, or you feel like you need to clarify, go back to your elaborations. Read over what you elaborated about the whole decision. Like I wrote about a paragraph. And you can go back. Go back to your stirrings and then reframe the question again if you'd like. But what I wanted to do now is to read that last verse that we did um, from last week. Ephesians 3, 20 and 21. And then we'll enter into a couple of minutes of silence. And then I'll give you an example from my own life. If that's helpful. If not, just turn off the video after we're done. But let's just be silent in the presence of God. He is so with you. And he's so glad that you're asking him a discernment question. Now, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you and accomplish all this. He will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request your most unbelievable dream, and exceed your wildest imagination. He will outdo them all, for his miraculous power constantly energizes you. So let's enter into a couple of minutes of silence, just being in the presence of God, relaxing in his presence. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. So I thought I'd give examples to you, an example to you. My, my stirrings, that first journaling about um, describing the decision that you wish to discern and elaborating. Um, I want to know if it is wise 
with the full ministry I already have to add 12 new um, direction sessions in 12 weeks. Six. Yeah, it'd be 12 in 12 weeks. So it would be um, two. I, I, I'm discerning about um, and I elaborated what are, is my capacity, God? What can I what can I handle? And to give you background, I signed up for something that I thought was a one day seminar. And it turns out it is a 12 week class. And I'm required to have two directees. It's a it's a training in doing a spiritual direction with children, which intrigues me and the whole reason I saw it was that I supervise people and some people that I supervise want to do spiritual direction with children and I don't necessarily want to do spiritual direction with children but I thought if I'm going to be supervising people that do then you know maybe maybe this class 12 weeks it would be great for me to get the experience of actually doing it i thought i was going to get an info class and read a couple of books so um i my why is that i'm better able to supervise others it's a vision for others in doing this and i'm also thinking of the children's ministry directors in my town that might really benefit from knowing about spiritual direction for children. Um, I think it would bless the moms of the kids that I would ask to do spiritual direction. And these are kids four to 17. That's as young as four and old as 17. Um, and I love the teacher. <laughs> Quite honestly, it just be, would be great to spend 12 weeks every Tuesday with the teacher. Um, so the stirrings in me were, ah, I don't have a calling to children. I felt stupid for signing up for something that I thought was a seminar and it was a 12 week class. Um, the stirrings, I'm afraid I will be stressed because I already have a lot of directees in my orb, um, adult directees. And, um, but the, there was a stirring of joy in knowing that I would be able to be around this friend that would be leading it. Also, um, um, a couple of my directees, their children, it would be great to bless my directees that way. Um, and, but also it, it involved me writing up, um, what's called verbatims and you write them out and then you're supervised and critiqued. And the way I do supervision is encouragement, 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 but I don't know what kind of supervision these people will have so it's like you don't know what you're going to get as far as a supervisor is concerned um and it will be a lot of extra work for me for 12 weeks and also i didn't write this as i'm verbalizing it i am also teaching i'm doing training of spiritual director so i have a in the midst of all that week seven of this course i will be in charge of two days of training for spiritual directors and because yeah you don't need to know what I'm going to train in it's just my area of expertise I'm so I'm asked to come in and do training for some spiritual directors so I encourage you that it was really good for me so my issue for discernment is should I take the class now or postpone it for next year. I think it's not a matter I really do want to take the class, but to be able to prepare and not have as many directees next year might be a better option. So that I'm doing this, but I encourage you to read this out loud to someone you, you and read it back to God. Read what you wrote in your journal. And it really, brain science all the way around says that when you read to someone else what you have been thinking or what you've been pondering with God it it really helps you and um, I could tell you all the fancy names for it but it really helps to verbalize it it also creates community with another person so 
that is step one. And that was putting your discernment question to God. Be blessed.